Hello guys and welcome to another music color tutorial. In today's episode we have guest tutor from Belgium. His name is uh, John Clark. Everyone from his uh, label is wondering how he's working so fast. He's like a song factory producing new track every 2-3 weeks. I'm also amazed from his uh, speed. And you may think that uh, quantity is not important in this case, but uh, quality. Well, his song Oxygen, for example, reached 81st place at Beatport Top 100 in Progressive House section. His track 12pm is at first place at his label Top 10 tracks. So if you still need proofs, check the description below where you can find all the links to get in touch with him and his work. So let's dive in and see how our friend John Clark made his uh, life easier with creating a template which helps him to start new projects fast and easy without wasting any time. Enjoy! Hello guys, this is John Clark from Belgium and welcome in this tutorial. Today, this will be about how to set up a starting template in Ableton. Um, what I will show you is the way how I work. So, um, if you have other ideas for your own template or you like to work um, more different, um, what I show you, it's not um, your truth, it's uh, my truth. So um, be free to experiment uh, on your own after seeing this. So let's get started. I always start my production uh, at the top with the kick and the bass. So here we already have a MIDI track. I will copy that several times. Or no, um, first we will uh, do this uh, um, default MIDI track. So once you will create a new MIDI track, you can have your prepared effects over here already. So first I put a utility in this. I set the utility minus five. And the way why I'm doing this is because uh, I always use the NLS and um, to, keep uh, to keep things far away from clipping, this is a good method to do this. The Waves NLS is actually a very good plugin to make your sound uh, sound a bit more analog. My favorite setting from the NLS is the Neve. So I will set it on Neve. Put this always half away to give uh, enough warmth. Okay. Um, then next up. Uh, You have the RP 550B that I use. Um, this one is very interesting because uh, it's also analog. And when you boost the high end, it does not really sound harsh. Then further in the chain, um, I use the EQ8 as a standard. And the effects that I use the most is of course delay and reverb. Standard, I always cut the high end and the low end a bit. Um, 
And ping pong I use a lot. Uh, I will put this off over here. And this one I will put off as well. Further reverb is also very important to make these kind of chains. Always, uh, most of time is low and high cut that I do over here. And the quality for your productions, always the best one, guys. So put it on high, please. Um, reverb, I will put off as well. Then to finish the whole bundle, uh, I use the good old LFO tool. Uh, where is the LFO? Right over here. Okay. Just a standard side chain a bit. I use side chain a lot, so uh, it's kind of important that this is m in my chain. Standard, I put this also on off. So right now I ha I'm having this interesting chain and uh, it's on a MIDI channel. So what we can do now is uh, save as a default MIDI track. Yes, I want to override. Uh, then this track, I will copy into an audio track. And here the same, we're gonna save this uh, audio track as a default. Okay, right now, so we have uh, a default audio track and default media track. And if I um, want to use another one, it will just keep the, the same settings, which is uh, very interesting. And here the MIDI, if you copy, um, I mean, if you insert a new one, you will have the same settings. Still here, one uh, minus seven. I always put it a bit lower to stay away from clipping and um, yeah, also that I have enough headroom for the master when I finish the track. Okay, so we will copy the MIDI a couple of times. And we will start with a kick track now. So right now this chain, I will change some things. I will put this one on. I'll put this on 50 because a kick it always has to be in this uh, area. I just uh, boost 2 dB. Just standard um, to create this uh, kick chain. Um,
here I already pre-made uh, something for my kick. So this is uh, the MIDI for the kick actually. Here you have a standard kick sample. Fade out a bit. Oh, that was kind of odd. sure it's in the right key. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is good. <laughs> um, so here we have the kick. Um, this is set on loop. It's very easy to drag this like this. Um, right now with the NLS, things are not getting uh, too loud, so it's good. For the kick, normally you don't have any delay or reverb. And your level to it's not necessary as well. Just uh, keep things basic when you make these kind of uh, chains in your template. Then over here, oh, sorry. What we also miss over here is a compressor. Um, I will use standard um, DSSL. No, let's take the SSL compressor. Just setting it a bit on a standard setting for this template. Here you can do uh, oh, a cut standard, just uh, the frequencies you don't you don't need. Okay, so this chain of uh, the kick is complete, I think so. Then this will be the base. And these two we will group. Sign track class to group tracks. For the days, I also have something very simple, standard, just um, for an easy start of a new production. Bass. This is just off beat, very simple. Maybe you can already 
put an instrument in here. I like the Anna. Maybe uh, standard we can use. Uh, yeah, we, we can just init it. Well, this is just a setting that I will uh, do for um, immediately have inspiration when, when you start a project. But of course, yeah, you have many kind of baselines. It's just uh, to start a project. You know? Just very basic, um, nothing special. Of course, uh, I would not totally not make a production uh, from this. So next, um, so we have the kick and the bass. We have the group. Uh, for the bass, uh, of course, always uh, standard. I, I put it on the side chain. Here maybe we can put the RP on. We can put it standard on hundred. This is a frequency I like for bass lines. It's not something that I would use immediately for bass lines, but um, I will just going to keep uh, this into this rack. Sometimes I use a compressor in for bass lines when uh, the notes are changing, but um, most of time. I make tech progressive, so my bass line uh, stays uh, yeah, most of the time in the same note. So I will just leave this for now, and uh, if I really need one, I can put it in this rack later when I start a production. Um, so now we have this group um, to finish this off. Um, I will use first the 
tape from Waves. I like this this one very much to give uh, that extra kind of warmth. Here it is. Then, as a second, I like to use just a compressor. For groups, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I always use the RP. I like this one. For the settings, uh, for group settings, uh, you take a very slow attack and the release I just put on one standard analog I put on. And um, let's see. To glue things together, uh, standard minus two, I think it's really good, sounds good like this. template I actually kind of go slightly lower with my volume but this is uh, more than okay like this um, then I also place the EQ8 this is um, when you group it needs a bit more uh, low end on the kick and, and the bass then you can easily add it add this over here not too much maximum i would say uh, plus 2 db otherwise you might have a problem with your sample or or how you equalize your kick and uh, your bass um no further what i also like to use and the group rack of my kick and my bass is a standard uh, filter. So let's place one. I like to use two. So this is my low pass. And this is my high pass. in an audio effect track okay um, now that we have this uh, we can go further let's do a drum group Uh, 
maybe we can start with the claps here. No, um, let's let's do the hi hat first. Okay. So we have a hi hat here. Um, let's see samples and IDs. So here we have the hi hat. same problem um. Um. okay So now the advantage is you can easily swap samples if you, you want uh, another hi-hat um, for another project. Uh, it, it, it's easy to swap as well with the kick. And um, also we're gonna do like this for um, the clap and uh, the closed hi-hats. Um, maybe... Uh, I will do standard plus 2 dB on a 10K. The delay and the reverb I set uh, off, as well as a sidechain. Yeah, I don't yeah, actually use sidechain on my hi-hats. So this is on loop. Let's make an 8-bar loop of it standard. Okay. And then we have the closed hi-hat. Um, I'll just use this one to um, be a bit more productive uh, in this session. So here uh, you already have the settings. Um, yeah, here already have a, this low cut as well. Uh, then you have the delay, um, the reverb, and the sidechain. Uh, sometimes uh, I can sidechain it on the hi hat, then I just remove the LFO tool and uh, use the sidechain compressor. It's just a different technique, this one. Okay. And then we have, of course, our claps. I will also just do it um, like the hi hats. I just have uh, this um, standard rack already. And I will use this uh, for this tutorial to be a bit more faster. So we'll make an 8 bar loop of it. This is 
way too low the volume Standard this uh, master chain, but I will remove it. Uh, okay, so now we go further. We have this uh, drum group. Okay, and now we're going to do a bit kind of the same as uh, the kick bass group. Just going to copy this. Okay. Now for this drum group, uh, we are going to create some scent effects. Um, I do recommend to use uh, lots of scent effects for the drum group and um, also maybe for your leads and other sounds um, when you're using scents um, you always original keep um, the sound without um, affecting uh, the whole sound when, when you're using uh, as an insert especially for drums like, like claps and so, and so on. Um, you might use lose the attack a bit uh, if you, you're you using um, too much uh, reverb as an insert. So this is a return track. Now, um, this I will rename as um, drum delay. Now I will get this delay. Just a standard setting. If you're making a new production, you can always tweak this. Um, this is just uh, for um, this template, of course. What I do now is I insert uh, an audio track. I will just um, use the NLS on this one and I will call this return. And put this in red. No, um, Maybe this one, this whole group can be in yellow. Uh, put this one in red, 
because this is my return track of my drum group. Here, uh, maybe kick bass I can keep in red. We don't need a return track over here. And I will going to explain you why we don't need that. Um, so for the return track of our drum group, um, we're going to send this one uh, to our return track. This one we'll put on in. Um, why I'm doing this is because um, I like to use filters as well on my drum groups. And when you're using a lot of uh, send return effects, um, it won't uh, affect the effects from the, the send return channels. Uh, which is kind of uh, annoying and I don't want that to happen when I filter the drum group it has to filter all of it I will give you this example right now so this is um The send and return effect is also affected by the filter. If that was not the case, you would get something totally different. Uh, you would get this. And that is absolutely not what I want in my productions. So we make this return track. Okay. This is all set. Now we make an extra um, return effect. And this I will call drum reverb. also to the return track of the drum group. Uh, 
Next we will just make a standard leads group. We have already some MIDI prepared into this. And the leads we take in the blue. Yeah. Maybe a slight more lighter. Okay. Um, for this group, um, normally I don't see why I would glue things. Um, Most of time, I just uh, leave it blank, the leads. But um, I do use the tape, of course. So uh, let's just get the tape. Standard. OK. And then further, um, I just make a standard group of uh, effects. We just call this effects. Now we'll copy some audio tracks. And put this uh, in here, in here, in here, in here. And also effects. Yeah, duplicate. Okay, so um, over here for the FX, we are also will be using uh, the Kramer tape. Just to warm things a bit up. Oh, and this uh, we forgot. Uh, we are going to make a return channel for um, the leads as well. Maybe return drums. Return. Okay, then we'll check and return. We will make one, uh, two extra return tracks. Paste. Copy. Paste. We 
maybe for a color we can pick the same for the leads and uh, the color we can match with the, the drum group so it's easily uh, to much more easily to, to recognize and this one we um, do the return leads okay on in and here we also place the, the, the low pass and the high pass filter which is something I use a lot in groups okay so right now we are kind of uh, prepared for this section so now um, we will do the master section this is my own personal master chain first we will use the NLS bus um, stereo standard on leaf uh, Then, um, for my chain, um, I will use the utility first. It may be better to put this uh, before. The width, uh, I do the standard um, one one twenty percent. Please, I do a mono. This is um, the master equalizer for me. Um, what I use behind this is um, the tape again. Kramer tape. I don't know why I use this um, behind all of this because normally um, standard the Kramer tape should be the first one into the line um, but I don't know how this comes but it, it's it's actually sounds better to me when I place this uh, here in this chain most of time I'm not saying all the time um, I also use in my master sta master chain standard um, is um, the mix. 
eccentric, but where is it? Um, okay, the mix centric is over here. And the mix centric um, is this plugin from Greg Wells, and yeah, it's a combination of compression equalizing and it opens uh, a bit up the the whole production um don't use it too wild but mild i prefer it mild otherwise uh, the sound might be destroyed uh, right now i just using uh, between three and and two leads something like this that's enough more than enough Um, okay, then I use a limiter, of course. The Fab Filter Pro L is my favorite. Um, this is actually the best one for, for loudness. Oh, this is um, our master chain. So we set this off until we are uh, going to master the track. Uh, we can use this. Once again, this is my basic setting. Um, I can change this in uh, the production as well. Mm. What I also use now uh, at the back is um, a utility. Over here. And this uh, I use actually as a, a mono stereo plugin. So um, when I'm making music, I can always check if the track also sounds good when it's mono. And I just press this button and uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, really handy. And after that, I place um, the Voxengo Spen. This allows me easily to check uh, the loudness during uh, the project of, uh, and the production. Okay. So now we have it all. Uh, Okay, so um, we can save this. Save live set as. Um, we can save this as a template project. And now at preferences, um, we will save the current set as a default. 
So every time when we load uh, a new project in Ableton, uh, we will get standard this screen with all those settings. And this will make our life much more easier uh, for us produ producers. Yeah. Okay, override default set. I already made one, but uh, this is kind of the same. Yeah. So none of this I did over here is the truth. This is my truth. This is what I use, how I start. So um, I hope um, this uh, has been inspiring you. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Till next time. Bye.